Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this complete CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lecture, you'll learn about ARP, the Address Resolution Protocol. As usual, we'll start off by looking at how this fits into the OSI stack. So we've got a sender on the left, it's going to send some traffic to the receiver on the right. The sender will compose the packet, starting off with the layer 7 information, that's the application layer. It will then encapsulate that with layer 6, the presentation layer header, that will be encapsulated in the session layer header. Then at layer 4, with the transport layer header, which will include information such as whether it's TCP or UDP and the port number. That will then get encapsulated with the layer 3 IP header, which includes the source and destination IP address. That will then be encapsulated in the layer 2 data link header, which includes the source and destination MAC address, and that will then get put onto the physical wire. So as you saw in the last lecture, the sender can either send directly to an IP address or it can send to an FQDN. If it sends to that fully qualified domain name, then that will need to be resolved into the IP address using DNS. So we'll find the destination IP address. Then when the packet gets down to layer two, the sender needs to also know the destination MAC address. So when it composes a packet, it needs to know both the destination IP address and MAC address as well. Now, the IP address is a logical address which is controlled by administrators, so it makes sense that we can have that referenced in the application, either directly as the destination IP address or as the FQDN, which can be resolved by DNS. But the MAC address, on the other hand, is not a logical address. We just have that great big flat global address space. So it's not really possible either for the user to enter the destination MAC address himself or for it to be configured in the application. So because of that, we need a way that it can be automatically derived. We need a protocol that's going to be able to figure out what the MAC address is automatically and that's what ARP is, the address resolution protocol. ARP maps the destination IP address to the destination MAC address. So in the example here, we've got a sender on the left at 172.23.4.1 and its MAC address is 1.2.3. And it's going to send some traffic to the receiver on the right with IP address 172.23.4.2 and the MAC address 2.3.4. And in our example, the sender already knows that it wants to send traffic to IP address 172.23.4.2 so it can compose the packet as far as the layer 3 IP header, but it doesn't know the receiver's MAC address yet. So it's going to use ARP to find that out. So it will send out an ARP request, which is a layer 2 broadcast. The ARP request says, hey, I'm looking for 172.23.4.2, what's your MAC address? That will come from the sender's MAC address of 1.2.3, and it goes to a destination MAC address of f.f.f. That is the layer 2 broadcast address. Obviously, the sender has to send it out everywhere because it doesn't know what the intended destination's MAC address is yet. That will come into the switch. The switch will see that it is broadcast traffic, so it will flood it out all ports. 
it will hit everything plugged into that switch, including, in our example, the receiver on the right, which will process that ARP request. It will see that it's looking for 172.23.4.2, and that is its own IP address, so it will respond to the ARP request. It will send an ARP reply back saying, I'm 172.23.4.2, and here's my MAC address. That comes from its source MAC of 2.3.4, and the destination MAC address is the original sender's unicast MAC address of 1.2.3. The receiver knows exactly where it's to send it back to because that original MAC address of 1.2.3 was in the ARP request. The switch will then send that ARP reply just out of port 1 down to the original sender because that was unicast traffic and it's for a known MAC address which is already in its MAC address table. Okay, so that is how ARP works when both of the hosts are on the same IP subnet. ARP replies are saved in a host's ARP cache so that it doesn't need to send an ARP request every time it wants to communicate with somebody else. To view the ARP cache, we can do that on Windows with the ARP-A command. On a Linux host, we use the ARP-N command. You can also see the commands there on the slide to flush the cache if you need to. We wouldn't normally do that, but if we were troubleshooting it or if the ARP cache had somehow got corrupted, that's how we would clear it. So let's have a quick look at that in the lab. So I'm here on a Windows host. Let's have a look at the IP address. It's 172.23.4.1. For this example, I've got a Linux host at 172.23.4.2. So let's ping that to generate some traffic. Okay, so in the host here, I'm going to ping 172.23.4.2. So it knows what the destination IP address is, but it doesn't know what the matching destination MAC address is yet. So it's going to do an ARP request to find that out. That happens in the background. You don't see it happening here. If I now do an ARP-A, I should see an entry for 172.23.4.2. That is the Linux host, and I can see what its MAC address is. If I jump onto that Linux host, and I do an ARP-N there, then I'll see an entry for 172.23.4.2, because I had some traffic between those two hosts. It's got an entry in its ARP cache for that host's IP address, and its MAC address as well. Okay, so that's how ARP works when both hosts are in the same subnet. In the next lecture, we'll see how ARP works when the traffic has to go through a router. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp by clicking the link above my head or in the description. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.